All right. Okay. Thank you everyone for waiting and uh, welcome to Snap and Share. Uh, my name is Brandon, uh, or in other words, uh, some people call me OK Brandon, or uh, my Instagram handle is Brandon OKJ. So it's a, a play of my initials. And welcome to our Snap and Share uh, by OKB.SG. So um, today we have uh, photographers from the As Per Normal Polaroid exhibition that will be sharing their photos that they have, as well as also some of the inspiration that allows them to get their photo. And uh, for the very first person that we have today, it's uh, Sam Samantha. And uh, let me just give you all a quick readout of Samantha as well. Uh, yeah, big wave, everybody. So um, um, for those of you who's joined in, right, I noticed you've all um, don't have your cameras on, but uh, if you can switch on the camera so we know we're not talking into the air, it's not just um, the photographers here only, and it's uh, you guys are tuning in to us as well. So do, do switch it on if it's possible. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead uh, with our Snap and Share. Uh, with Samantha. Yeah. So um, Samantha is one of uh, Singapore's first film wedding photographers and uh, she loves all things analog. Um, you'll find her diving into experimental film, manual lenses and instant film, um, all in a bit to learn more about the, the old school medium. So um, Sam, would you like to uh, share a bit about yourself and uh, we can talk, we can show your photos. Hey John, hi, hi everybody as well. Again. Hi. is also signing in also. Sam, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just a bit about myself. Um, I've been shooting film since I was in primary school. So the first film camera that I ever got was this really cheap Hello Kitty point and shoot that my mom bought from 7-Eleven like really, really long ago. So I think that kind of ignited my passion for film photography. Plus I like the look and feel of it. It's something that you can't really replicate with a filter. Even though I must say, like, a lot of filters this day do the job pretty well, like VSCO, like Nomo, which is one of my favorite apps to kind of replicate that look. But in a way, you can't really get the exact feel of film unless you are actually using film. So a bit more about Polaroids. Um, I started shooting on Polaroid maybe five years ago. Prior to that, I was only using 35mm cameras or, like, medium format cameras like Hoga, a bit more experimental, what you would call domography rather than um, classic film photography. Because I like the ease of it, I can just carry the camera around without thinking so much about the lenses. So five years back, I got my first film camera, no sorry, first Polaroid, and I have it here with me, it's the SX70 um, with the leather casing and all. It's one of my favourite cameras still. Let me just open it up to show you. Yeah. So this is how it looks like. It's a bit different from the modern, modern Polaroids that you might see nowadays. There's a lot more compact. But what I like about the SX70 um, is that you can use interchangeable lenses or very good lens add-ons. For example, if you look at um, some of my photos, Brandon, do you want to help show some of my Polaroids? Sure, no problem. Yeah. Like, for instance, the... Uh, okay, let's open the one with the yellow tulips. Okay. It looks a little blur from here, but it's actually um, yellow tulips and it's shot with a um, macro lens on the SX70. So you get a bit of a depth of field, and that's not something you often get with a Polaroid camera because sometimes it can be a bit flat. Yeah, you can't really get a very low f-stop for a Polaroid camera. So it's nice to have that option to have a bit of bokeh in your Polaroid as well. So if you click on the other photo, um, the one with Janessa and Phoebe. <laughs> so this one is taken with the newer camera, the One Step Plus. So it's a lot more automated and it's better for like bright sunlight. So I think in my collection of photos for the exhibition, I tried to show both past and present Polaroid cameras 
just to have a different feel to it, like the ones with more bokeh, a more narr a more more depth of feel compared to the ones that's a bit more like portraiture style with less of a depth of feel. So I have both types of photos in my collection here. And what I like is that with the frames that I can choose from, there's a lot of nice contrast that I can have with the frame and the photos. Like if you look at this photo of Phoebe and Janessa, um, it's taken at Little India where there's a lot of colorful walls and the frame is gradient from purple to light blue and it just brings out the vibrancy of the environment and I like that very much. Yeah, whereas for the older photos, I use mostly black frames. Like if you pick the ones with the, yeah, correct. This one's a long exposure shot that I took at Marina Bay with the SX-70. I'm not sure if a lot of you know this, but for the SX-70, there's actually no option to take long exposure. So if you're shot on the SX-70, you might know that to take a, a long exposure shot, right? I had to, what's that called? I had to, um, open up the backing to kind of review the film before I close it back again in order to stop the exposure. Yeah, there's no button for me to like start and stop the long exposure for the SX-70. So it's a bit more troublesome that way. So back to the SX-70 photos. So it's a bit more cumbersome because it's heavier as well. So I use it to take a lot more still live photos instead, instead of people. So you would notice that I shot um, the oranges that were on the floor. So if you look at the still live shots that I have, actually all of them are not set up shots. I kind of took them in the moment. So what happened was that um, I was coming back from NTUC and my plastic bag broke. So my oranges and everything fell on the floor. <laughs> So I went into my house and came out with my Polaroid and then I took this photo. And the sunlight was just nice, lah. The, shadow, the shadow and all. It was a golden hour, if I'm not wrong, at my late grandparents' house, just outside at the what's that called? corridor area. So yeah, if you look at another photo, can you open up the birthday cake one? <laughs> Sorry, just a quick check. Uh, did we lose Samantha for a while? I'm still here. Okay. For some Can you reason. Hear me? Yeah. Is it laggy? So sorry. I was uh, loop I was hearing you looping nonstop. Oh, okay. Um uh, it's okay on my end. It was looping. Yeah, okay, come. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. So this is um, a birthday cake. It's actually the last birthday cake that my late grandma had before she passed away, like a year later. So a lot of the photos in the exhibited collection were mundane moments that felt magical only after it happened, which is how I like to approach photography in a way. I'm not a fan of um, setting up scenes for the sake of it, Instead, I approach photography with a slightly more photojournalistic style. So if I chance upon a moment that I think is worth documenting, then I document it. And if after that, it feels magical because it was, then I like it that way. Instead of um, setting up a scene and styling it in a way that makes it look good. Even though I have no objections against like a style scene, I mean, they look good in terms of like for fashion photography and whatnot, but in terms of still life, in terms of like street photography, that's what I prefer more to capture the moment as it is. Yeah. So if you can open up another one, um, let me see. Um, the one with the slide, okay, the one with the trees against the building. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one. Okay, you can open up this one as well. Okay, so I like um, the look and feel of the palm trees against the background. 
This was taken during golden hour as well. So I'm a fan of shooting at golden hour because I feel like the sunlight at that point of time really enhances a subject without um, much editing needed. So between 5 to 6 p.m. is my favorite time to shoot photos, especially um, for Polaroid. Yeah, because I find that it turns out quite well without much editing needed if the light is good at that hour. Yeah. Uh, let me see what else. You can take the one with you and Phoebe, the legs. <laughs> This one was very popular when you upload, uh, when, when a lot of people commented on this when it was so, uh, seen or shown on Instagram. Yeah, so one thing I like about Polaroid is that you can imagine how the photo looks like before you actually take it. In a way, there are some surprises, but you can somewhat imagine it in your mind. Like for instance, um, Phoebe and Brandon were facing each other. They were posing for someone else's camera, actually, not my camera. So I think Phoebe just like tiptoes, <laughs> probably to pretend she's kissing Brandon. So I went in to take a Polaroid shot because I know the whole row of film, uh, the whole pack of film would be um, gradient colors on the outside. So I was really hoping for a color that would contrast with the yellow background and their shoes, which were both white. So I just took a gamble and it turned out to be blue, which was a nice surprise. <laughs> That's the great thing about the colored films as well. Because if you are shooting very colorful subjects, you tend to get that kind of nice contrast compared to a white frame. Yeah. Okay. I also quite like the fact that you've also got um, the shadow inside. If you notice it, there's actually the shadow of... Um, yeah, there's a shadow of you and Phoebe at the background. Like, subtle. <laughs> okay. Nice. Um, is there any other shots that uh, I missed out earlier that you wanted to share? That oh I'm yeah, you can take out the one with the three brass at the bottom. <laughs> okay. Very whimsical though. It's very di different from the rest of the collection. Hmm. Okay, so like with every story, there's, with every photo, there's a story behind it. So I was actually um, taking photo of my old brother um, to give it to my cousin who just wanted to, um, she just wanted to some hand-me-downs. So I just took out my Polaroid to take some photos of it. And my grandma asked me, why are you like airing your dirty laundry? Then I thought, okay, that's true. In a way, I feel like photography is kind of airing your dirty laundry in a way. You can't really lie to the camera lens, even though you can always filter it away or edit it away. But I think Polaroids are the most truthful way of photographing something because it's, it's out on the negative. There's no editing involved. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. If you guys have any questions for Sam, feel free to put it inside the chat, uh, or um, you can also ask her um, at the end of our step and share. And yeah, uh, next up, we've got Damien and Sandra. So uh, let me give you a quick introduction of them. So Damien and Sandra are a couple who loves to shoot with Polaroid. Um, especially with the vintage uh, cameras uh, that Polaroid made. And everywhere they go, they would actually have a camera in their hand, waiting to snap an image that evokes meaning to them. They hope to inspire others who come across uh, their photos to explore the world of analog cameras together. Mm. So over to you, Damien and Sandra. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, yes, so hi, Damien and Sandra here. Uh, <laughs> Damien <we're>, and Sandra. <laughs> yes, quite easy, easy reference here. Uh, yeah, so so again, thank you for, for allowing us to speak uh, and obviously uh, giving us the opportunity, opportunity to host our pictures during the exhibition. Um, I think when we first heard of the topic, we were, you know, as per normal, you obviously, it's obviously a reference to what's going on right now in, in, in real life, uh, what with COVID and all and affecting us in different ways. So when we look through, the, when we were deciding on the pictures, we were thinking, you know, what 
what pictures best captured, um, you know, the what's going on around us, what has changed, what has stayed the same. Um, and, and ultimately, I think what the photos that we chose, we hope would kind of express that. Um, maybe we can go to obviously what has what has changed, right? So if you look at the last, uh, I think the, 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 the picture of the the gardens and, and, and there's a person standing at the hallway. So uh, sorry, I think that's the eight, the, the eighth picture. Yeah, sorry, our, our pictures are not as uh, descriptive as uh, Samantha's one. Uh, but I, um, yeah, so, so, so this was one of the first pictures that when we shot, it, was, it, it kind of struck us in a way. Um, it's, it was actually taken at um, the Flower Dome and we, when we shot it, uh, you know, it just so happened that there was a safe distancing officer standing there. Um, and it kind of really remarked on the fact that because of how we, um, you know, because of how things have turned out, we have to socially distance and all that. It kind of reminded us that, you know, there's some sense of, sense of loneliness that, that goes around. And I think if you read the news and you read what people post online, you know, there is some semblance of, of this, there's, there's a bit of, you know, being alone and lonely. So I, I felt, I, I think that picture really evoked quite a lot of meaning in us. And I think like how Brendan mentioned, when we take the photo, we we do want to take a photo that best captures the 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 um the meaning and and, and in fact the content as well as what's and how it can be a reflection of what's going on in our lives as well. So um, as you notice, there were there's actually some uh there's sort of like a very faint black border around it. That's because we were actually using a was it a Mamiya RB67? Yes, with, with a Resi Vault modified um impossible eye lab. Yeah. So it, it as you can see, it's not, it's not, uh, there's no full coverage. Mm. It's only it's a bit of a black border, which I thought was quite unique. But it's really sharp, as Brandon has uh, kindly zoomed in. <laughs> it's very sharp, man, and that was something that we yeah we we really love to use. More yeah, and I think I think actually a feature of our photos. Uh, um, I mean, we we obviously we love shooting uh, instant film, both you know whether using the older antique cameras or even the modern you know uh, Polaroid, uh, even now Polaroid original and Polaroid cameras. But I think what we do strive in our photos uh, is is really the ability to see things. You know, it's almost as if we are seeing it with our own eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a that's a that's a popular like kind of like perception that uh, Polaroid uh, instant film can tend to look, you know, very dreamy, very uh, whimsical. But um, we also do hope that to, to actually show that, that you know, is, you are able to shoot very clear um, um, quality photos with Polaroid. But of course, you know, just, um, you know, a little modification sometimes can go a long way as well. So this 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 uh, setup is actually one of our favorites as well. Um, yeah, so so going back to the theme of what has, has changed. Um, yeah, so if we go back to the main page, yeah. So the, the, the double exposure of, uh, yeah, there's Sandra and I wearing a mask. So, um, so again, uh, um, which uh, we, we, we use- this with the yeah. Mamiya Universal Press with the, uh, this time is with a CB70 bag. So there was no modification. There was a, we shot it on 600 film with a battery pack. So this one was uh, shot with a 100 millimeter F2.8 lens on the Mamiya Universal Press. Yeah, yeah. so, so I, I, I think, I think if you're, if you're looking at, at the fact that, that when we shot this, um, we were obviously aiming for the face to be overlapped. And I think because we were both wearing <laughs> masks, it, it kind of fell nicely. Because I, I think if you have facial features that, that kind of overlap, sometimes they look a bit strange. I, I mean, that's also an, an artistic perception. But I think this, 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 um, the outcome was really quite apt again of, of you know, a sharp contrast to loneliness. You have uh, us hanging out together. And I think even what we are doing right now, even on Zoom and, and, and talking to each other uh, and, and, and being able to communicate, that, that definitely shows that in these times there have been changes and movements. Uh, I think even in technology or otherwise, <laughs> thanks Brandon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and that which, which um, allows us to communicate and socialize as well. I mean, I mean, you know, change can be good or bad, but change is a constant. So, so, so this was uh, one of our favorite photos that we, we, we definitely sh uh, shot uh, recently. Um, yeah, so if uh, going back to, yeah, going back to the main page. Yeah, so, so actually some of the, some, some of the other different photos, um, uh, we, we, so, so during, during this time of curation, we were deciding what photos to upload. We also sort of showing other mediums as well. So if you select the uh, Marina Bay Sands picture, so that's the, the, the greenish looking tinge. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I mean, first of all, it's an expired film as you can see, but more, more importantly, it's, it's actually not, 
one it's not it's not strictly a the, the current modern Polaroid kind of square film, which obviously I'm holding my hand and what you've been seeing. Um, it's actually a pure part Polaroid film. So Polaroid actually did make pure part film back in the 80s, I think 80s to 90s, that, even before that, yeah. Um, and we managed to get our hand on, on, on one of the on one of these uh, expired film as well. And I think with expired film, uh, there's always a risk that you know you get a good pack or a bad pack, because that is um that that is always that is always one of the the, the concerns um you know like like when buying it so i think we were, we were quite fortunate here to get a good pack and even though it was quite greenish i think the photo was the the, the pack was easily almost 30 years old i think yeah yeah so but but the fact that it managed to capture something and it was imprinted of this image we, we felt really we we we, we 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 were really pleased with the result mm -hmm. yeah so MBS also things like MBS or that you know uh, the modern I think structure. modern structures and and obviously something that you can still see you know where whether you wear a mask or not so so it's one of the one of the mainstays of and iconic aspects of Singapore that that we definitely wanted to capture and show um, yeah so going back to to um, to the film so if you go to the very bottom last film. Uh, so I, I think I think that's yeah that one yeah so so that's an image that I think many people might be familiar with it's taken in Tiong Bahru, um you know the the mm. the you know like the the short housing estates there with the with a lot of a uh, lot of um, cafes and all that right so 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 this was this was back then when when they obviously still covered up all the seats <laughs> so we thought it was a very interesting you know uh personage of you know again what's going on in in, in our in our time right now so um and and this was actually shot with. Uh, uh, Polaroid pure part film, but this time it's actually shaped like a square, so it's a bit more um, more familiar to 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 people who would see this photo. And also, it's, it, the film was also quite expired as well. So so by the time we were quite pleased with the result. In fact, we have to say like like amongst the pure part film, this is actually one of our favorites, but it's also quite rare. So we do treasure each shot that we take. Yeah. So um yeah so just just uh moving back again to the yeah to to this yeah so. So so just uh you can start at the third photo yeah the the one of the fans yeah so so actually the the, the other thing about shooting in Singapore is that sometimes you feel like you shot everywhere that you shot you know sometimes you think like oh we've been to Orchard we've been to the CBD area we've seen everything that we have to see but actually this shot which you know some people might say oh it looks like something out of you know somewhere could be somewhere in 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 a, like a rural area or something it was actually shot uh, i think somewhere near i think it was it was while we were traveling up basically along um i think it was like was it crunchy? yeah going towards crunchy uh, and yeah so so there were a lot of uh, salita basically so so there were a lot of um basically un unused and unclaimed land so um so so we saw this picture and we felt that there was something special to it because again it's not something that you see in Singapore. So we shot through the fence. I think it was a, sort of like an abandoned house as well, and there were like a lot of locks in front. So again, I think I think we we want to show the people that you know because sometimes we do get tired of 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 seeing the same pictures over and over again, whether they're on Instagram or Facebook. And so I think you know I think it's an endeavor, but a welcome and a worthy endeavor to shoot. Um, photos of places that are less explored. Yeah. So actually if you just click next. I think this uh, camera, yeah, this sorry. photo was shot on the new regular SX70. Yeah, the so one that, that Samantha showed. That Samantha yeah. showed just now. So it was very interesting that you can actually manually focus. Yeah. And we managed to get that Dell feel. So that was one of the favorite features of that camera. Yeah. Yeah. So if you just click next, uh, just select right to the next photo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so again, uh yeah, so going on the theme as per normal, right? Uh, or rather, what hap what has happened during the uh, circuit? Uh, rather, I think during you know, phase one, phase two was obviously the fact that a lot of ships were stranded, and so I think on one night we were we were just driving around uh, Marina Bay, um, around you know the places where I think near the ferry terminal, and we saw the you know the ship being shot there. Uh, I mean obviously being anchored there, and we felt that it kind of said you know, it kind of spoke a lot about the fact that, you know, all of us, we can't travel out of Singapore right now. So, so I mean, even the, the fact that the ship, I think, I don't know if they're still launching like, like uh, cruises well, to nowhere, to, to nowhere or something, but, but I, I think in, in any case, it does kind of, you know, it kind of resonates with us. It, it, it brings meaning to us knowing that, yeah, this is how we feel, you know, we're stuck in Singapore. We can't even get out of, of Singapore. So, yeah, so, so, so definitely that's, that's a, that's a story that we wanted to capture with the photo as well. And yeah. this photo frame was taken with the, uh, I think it was a limited edition Polar original film. So you can tell the tones were a bit more, uh, it's not as sharp. It was quite expired, but we do like how the contrast and the light came out from the ship and the yacht. Yeah, and especially if, 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 if I mean, you know, and not all films are perfect or not, or not all films are made equally. So there might be a, a issue of sometimes the color correcting and mm -hmm. shifting beyond what you may like. But but the, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, you can actually 
then intentionally shoot with with different mediums in mind and, and, and particularly to shoot maybe in different environments. So for example, this shot, uh, which was shot at night, would look better, you know, because of the purple hues that, mm. that came out as a result of the film. Sometimes, you know, we're not expecting perfection, but at the same time, um, we, we, we do like to experiment as well and, and hopefully get a different outcome each time and, and, and capture something interesting. So this was one of them. Yeah, so um, yeah, so going back, uh, yeah, so, so maybe, maybe, I don't know if we still have time. Do we, do we still I think have we still have, Brennan, do we still have time? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we not go ahead yeah, a bit more. No worries. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so, so, so. so the, the sun? Do you think it's that one? Oh, yeah. So, so I, I think one of the, the sun ones. So, sorry. The, the one with the rainbow hue, right? So, I, I, I think I think there's something that maybe, uh, I, I think some of you might have seen the news and I think it was, uh, it was a phenomenon that featured, I think, for like like in the midday of one of the, like a few, few weeks ago or a few months ago. So, I remember, I, I think there was like a, what was some sort of a solar effect where you could see the rainbow around the sun. And, uh, and, and so I think what I, was, I was carrying a SR 680 at the time. And uh, what we did was we, we, we just had to, you know, just aim it at the sky, you know, and, and compose. Obviously we can't catch the whole thing. And obviously it's quite dangerous to aim your, your camera directly at the sun, but we, we kind of try to aim it in a way where you could see the clouds as well as the rainbow. So it kind of looks like a reverse rainbow. I guess if you turn the, the picture upside down, it looks like the rainbow like, like that's captured, you know, with the sky above, but it's the other way around. And and I think, again, going back to the theme as per normal, you know, I mean, the fact that we can still enjoy all these um, uh, um, um, visages and all these uh, uh, landscape views, um, even even during such a, you know, difficult time as this, I think kind of really harks back to, 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 to our, you know, our determination and also our ability to enjoy things as they happen. Yeah. So uh yeah so moving on to I I, I think spectra? Shall we do the spectra? oh yeah yeah so 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 one so one of the other formats we we're gonna cover is at the bottom so so it's the spectra uh format uh it's right now it's really discontinued by Polaroid but what essentially it's more rectangular in feature and basically you know we use this to shoot during the National Day fireworks and the National Day fireworks obviously this year was very unique because. Uh, for the first time, they were going to be launched, you know, in the in the urban areas. So we this was taken at Bishan, and and basically we sat on a tripod and shot it with our spectral camera. But again, mm -hmm. I think it's again going going back to the memories, the fact that we could literally watch it from our own homes. And I think obviously that was the aim of having these fireworks uh, in the area as yeah. well. I suppose because yeah. National Day this year was a bit unique, so fireworks in the neighborhood. And if mm. you look closely at the back, there's also Amokyo fireworks. I'm not too sure you can see it. That small straight. Is that a building or a firework? I think that's a firework. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 there was, I think right now, or basically on the bottom right uh, beside the, the fireworks. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you can you can kind of see, uh, actually there was Amokyo also going off in the distance. So so yeah. actually, actually- It's I, spotty I'm, though, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, I think well, I mean, a tip right now, right? If you are, if you are going to shoot uh, and if the location stay the same, then Bishan is the, <laughs> is the best place to shoot uh, fireworks because you actually can see the second one at the back. Yeah. Yeah, just a, just a tip out there. Um, yeah, so so this was using Spectra film and, and I think like like what I think what has been pointed out, we do love shooting films of uh, of all mediums as well as all uh, sizes really because I think each film medium has its own you know uniqueness and, and that's what we are going for. Um, and I think the very last one that, that we we'll probably want to talk about is uh, of course the eight by ten film. Oh, we um, forgot to talk about. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's okay. I don't the think sunset. Time. Yeah, I don't think time. But <laughs> okay. Uh, but but the eight by ten film. Yeah. So 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 this one is um. So we 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 brought it in person as well. This is what was shown in our exhibition. Um. Yeah. So if you look at it here, and I think if you can compare it to the size of a regular Polaroid film, it's definitely like almost like one 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 eight one ten smaller. Um. But basically. Um, we shot this using a uh, you know um, large format camera, the Intrepid camera, and I think um, it's really one of the well, it's really one of the highlights of, of our experiences. You know, to be able to own and shoot with a a, a full um, a large format camera, eight by ten. So so this was taken. We were we were at the Tanjong is it Tanjong Ru, Tanjong Ru Tanjong. basically the the run the, the the running and cycling route towards a, a Marina Bay Barrage, uh, from the opposite side, and and it was at dark at night, and we knew that 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 I think one of the best times to shoot to shoot uh eight by ten is really uh you know at night where there's really no one to disturb you. So so we we went over there and shot this. I think this was this was a three minute exposure. Yeah. <laughs> so because of the you know reciprocity and and all that so 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 but and and I think the 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 remarkable part of this picture is that it's the it's not only the glow at the bottom because of the long exposure the the glow on the waters but the fact that I think at that time the 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 
the the the wheel. Sorry, I forgot the name. The boy, the boy. <laughs> no, no, uh, it's in the Singapore Flyer. Yeah, Singapore Flyer. Sorry, <laughs> pardon me. The Singapore Flyer uh was not moving. So I, I mean, I'm not sure if it's in operation or not. But but the fact that it wasn't moving yeah. meant that we could capture each detail of you know even the individual Carriger. um carriages and 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 all that. I mean, yeah. So 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 this was was one of our was really one of our favorite pictures on the eight by ten film, and um and you know we were, we're still quite thankful that that Polaroid is still making eight by ten film, um for you know for use on 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 the on the intrepid camera. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So so. So yeah, so 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 I think I think that that's all we have to say, and I and I think going back to the team again as per normal again, this is something that you can still enjoy on your way out. Um, you know, if you're exercising and just going by the area, you know, just you know, take a camera out and and shoot some pictures. So, so I think that's kind of what we wanted to kind of inspire from our our photos that we chose as well. Yeah. So yeah, thank thank you, Brandon. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay. okay thank you. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay, sorry guys. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Damien and Sandra. And I think I just want to add quickly that the um, Polaroid seems to be able to capture the uh, what you call sunset and the the night the day shots pretty well now. I think it's the new films are doing much better. Uh, mm. and also because you guys also controlled your con your exposure quite well lah, so you were able to see the the photos uh, turn out better than uh, sometimes when you try because the sun sunset and sunrise are very tricky. They will they tend to be overexposed and the the lighting tends to change also. Yeah. So okay, thank you very much. Uh, next up we've got Jen and uh, Jen, if you all know, she's using um. A, Handler, uh, some kind of beautiful, and uh, let me just give you a quick intro of Jen. Yeah. Um, rekindled by her love for analog, uh, Jen is currently pursuing her photography journey further back in history with nineteenth uh, century wet plate. Uh, what is the word? Codeon. Te techniques. I think she will be able to give you a better explanation of it. Uh, let's all welcome Jen to share her photos. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a wet plate collodion, collodion. And it's uh, basically we shoot directly with a large format camera directly on a metal plate, uh, tin type. And um, you see your, your image develop right away after the shot is taken. So it's like Polaroids. So going back a bit uh, to where I first began photography. So um, actually I use, I love uh, vintage stuff and old school stuff. And I would travel a lot and just go to flea markets just to search out film, old cameras. I just like the look of it, like all vintage typewriters and et cetera. And um, actually I didn't, I. I wasn't a very good photographer. And so it was just collecting and collecting, but you know, film was so expensive and they were so like precious at a point in time. I mean, it's, it's much cheaper back then. Um, I was using one of those uh, original Polaroid uh, from the original companies. And um, so through it, I, I tried to practice photography by learning how to compose first and with uh, the square, it's easier in, in a sense. And uh, through tra traveling, instead of like buying stuff and souvenirs, I thought it would be a good idea to actually send myself a Polaroid as a postcard. That's why um, if you went to the exhibition, you'll find that um, actually I, I, I kept out my address. <laughs> so basically I, I used to just like uh, mail back my my photographs because to me these are like really precious because it has the stamp mark of where I actually went and and um, that's the evidence of where I've been to the place uh. in essence I, I, I photoshopped it out <laughs> for the actual image but um, so in a way uh, through taking the photos it was a good memory for me and so during COVID I was actually kind of asking myself like, because uh, uh, photography has, I taught myself photography eventually through the digital way. And one thing about digital is so easy to just take a lot of a lot of shots and it's always like quantity. And then you choose the best shot, then you edit it to 
the best of your ability. But I was getting kind of uh, sick of that. And I decided like, why don't I challenge myself to actually go for quality works and like snap it, uh, shoot it such that I don't have to edit so much. <laughs> and that was my purpose <laughs> in learning photography. And that was how uh, this whole uh, journey began. Um, so it began 2009 where I, 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 I was exploring with one of my classmates. We were learning German and we got this common love for uh, Wong Kar Wai films. And, and, and then we decided to go on this uh, backpacking trip after learning German for like two months. So we explored East Euro. And I think about um, my theme for the whole set was actually kindred spirits because actually my own friends my own circle of friends don't do photography and they are like uh in in careers that's very different from my creative line but i think through photography and especially like through this exhibition i'm so excited like i meet all of y'all and there's so much to learn from you guys as well i mean um because this polaroids were like done back 11 years ago and then uh, I moved on to other other cameras and other things. But finding them during this COVID period reminded me of the um, the essence of why I chose photography in the first place. Because it was very simple. Like I didn't know how to shoot back then, but it was exploring and experimentation with a good friend, and we were just like wandering around the streets and we just shoot we just lie on the street and we just shoot <laughs> or we see a shadow so we just shoot you know it's very pure um uh i would say like there's no there's no plan there's no uh very free spirited uh and thing about the creativity of photography and that inspired my then during this COVID period where I was very jaded by all the commercialism of photography and Instagram and all the social media like there's so much information and so much images out there I quite kind of question myself like what kind of images moving forward I want to pr produce and came to this conclusion that I really want to do meaningful uh, projects and meaningful time spent with people and hence I've decided to focus on portrait photography and also I found my I found a very good mentor at Hipshaw. Um, and I think this finding this box of Polaroids and all the old films like give me like my own is I'm like inspired <laughs> by my old self that actually um that this love for photography is never ending and the learning process is never ending. And also uh, I'm very excited like to find back that love. You know, after shooting for 15 years, it's like can be quite jaded. <laughs> and um, yeah, so as per normal, in the sense that now I'm pursuing it in a lot way. So I collected a lot of film cameras and film over the years, but I never used them because I used the digital. <laughs> like digital was an easy way out, but now I'm forcing myself to go full analog and putting the challenge on myself that I want to shoot quality stuff and every picture that comes out of each click uh, is a push and challenge to myself instead of just like click, 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 click. Yeah, sorry, I'm not very good with words, that's why I shoot. <laughs> so I always, um, there's this artist that, has, uh, uh, and shooting, actually photography also was also a way of expressing myself, uh, of my thoughts, that whatever that's inside my mind, um, I try and convey it and express it through my words. So, because I can't, I'm not very good with words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all. And you notice I shoot, shoot a lot of people because um, I'm actually an introvert, but I feel that through photography, it opens up this opportunity for me to hear the stories from other people and interact with them. And from there, um, I should, uh, after shooting with them, that's why I bring a Polaroid and now uh, also um, another brand so that I can actually share instantly uh, the, after interacting with a person and asking to shoot them, I could share with them instantly and give, uh, give it as a gift, as a memory 
of our interaction. And that's very special to me and meaningful to me. Yeah. Mm, thank you, Jen. Thank you very much. So uh, while you were talking, your photos were show showing. Um, is there any particular photo that uh, you wanted to talk about? Uh, you're okay? If you're okay, we'll move on to uh, our next, next okay. okay. So um, yeah, next person let me introduce to you is our friend here who is uh, Prash. Uh, and Prash thinks he's a good photographer. He, but he's just a recovering bubble tea addict. As his luck would have it, he started his photography journey on a vintage XX70. And just as the and, and that was just as the Polaroid Corporation went bankrupt and were, and had discontinued their film. Um, since then, uh, Prash has uh, rediscovered his uh, interest in instant photography, and also he's also probably still in denial about recovering from his bubble tea addiction. So uh, let's have Prash. Hi everyone. So I don't really have a reason for shooting Polaroids. Lah. But I'll maybe start with my origin story since everyone else shared theirs. Uh, basically, I started shooting photos. Oh, thanks, Phoebe. Yeah, I love my background too. It's bikini bottom. I think SpongeBob would be quite proud of it. Okay, but back to the my origin stories. Yeah, so I started shooting. Uh, I started getting into photography because I realized I didn't really have much uh, photos of my childhood. So I thought I wanted to document as much as I can. Lah. Then uh, in the midst of like finding myself thrust into photography, I just happened to pick up instant photography. Uh, at that point in time, it was both uh, Instax and Polaroid in the market, but Polaroid just went bankrupt. So I actually acquired an SX-70 as well. Uh, and um, got like a few packs of film and then started shooting on it. But then uh, eventually films became uh, prohibitively expensive. So slowly I transitioned into shooting more and more in stacks actually. And uh, I continued that for quite a while actually. And I even shot on 35mm roll film. Uh, following that, of course, uh, I think like most of us, we eventually transitioned into digital. And similar to Jen also, uh, I think after a while, you do get jaded shooting digital. So actually last year, like uh, I looked at my Instagram, uh, you know, you want to do your top nine. Then I realized I only had eight photos for the whole year. <laughs> kind of spent, uh, made me go down a, a path of reflection. So I decided to go back to the aspect of photography that I really liked, which was shooting on film. And uh, I went back to the what I originally started on, which is instant film. So... That, that's basically my origin stories. Uh, um, maybe we will, I'll just run through the photos as well. I think when, when we speak about instant film, um, there are actually two main ones in the market, uh, Fujifilm and uh, Polaroid as well. So Fujifilm actually makes excellent uh, film. Uh, and I think a lot of people think that Polaroid doesn't um, make as nice films, but I wanted to prove uh, that actually you can get very rich, vibrant colors with Polaroid uh, film. So actually I go to great extent just to make sure that actually I can capture colors. Personally, I don't like the vintage look. Uh, I, I know some of y'all uh, actually go for it, uh, but I, I guess to each his own. Whatever you like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, so actually for my exhibition, I just went out did stuff as I normally would, uh, and I took photos, and I tried to capture them as real life as possible, colors as true as possible, and as vibrant as possible. Uh, the first time Brandon and me, we went, uh, I joined them for a photography walk at MBS. I think he was shocked when he saw that uh, I had a nice pack in my bag. So the thing about Polaroid film is the maximum operating temperature of it is 28 degrees Celsius. And that actually is Singapore on a very cold day. Uh, so most of the days, actually, you're, we're actually shooting Polaroid film at a temperature it's not suited for. 
So actually to circumvent that, I actually carry an ice pack around uh, and uh, uh, it always is positioned just next to the next pack of film that I'm about to use. So that way I try to keep the film as fresh as possible and uh, after it's exposed, I will actually try to uh, keep it near the ice pack as well. But you don't want it to get too cold. Actually, shooting with an ice pack is an art of its own. Maybe I'll do a tutorial another day. But maybe let's jump into the photos as well. So um, the one I really like is actually the MBS one. So if uh, Brandon, maybe you can select the one of the MBS, yeah. So a lot of people also mentioned that because I try to do the opposite of what people uh, assume of Polaroid. So this is actually a long exposure. It was shot on a SLR 680. So my wife and I we went for dinner. It was restaurant week. Uh, you know, we're just trying to live life as per normal, uh, going out, having fun, all that. So we had a, we did a short walk lah after the dinner. Romantic lah, romantic a bit. Uh, then uh, as we walked down, then I, I caught like from this angle, MBS looked beautiful. So I managed to find like this uh, like pillar that actually could rest my SLR 680 on. And I just went for it. I think it was like a four or six second exposure. The camera just compensated for it on its own. But I think the colors came out beautiful. Another thing about Polaroid is, is uh, when you first start, actually, you will never know what to expect. Uh, but as you shoot more and more, I think the colors will come out better and, and you know you know what to expect as well once you've shot a few few packs yeah so i love the colors i love how it turned out in this shot uh fortunately i i didn't have to bring a tripod or anything i found something where i could rest the camera on then i just used my handphone to just like you know uh angle it in a nicer fashion so that the, the mbs was in frame then uh, maybe we can get out of this photo um, another one I really like is the jellyfish. So that's the 2627, Brandon. Yeah. So actually this was at the Sea Aquarium. Uh, I think someone at the exhibition asked me how I shot the photos, uh, the, this and the dolphin photo. That's uh, the first photo uh, underwater. Uh, I didn't really shoot it underwater. I shot it at the Sea Aquarium. But the, the hard part about these is you actually got to keep very still. I didn't use a tripod again. This was freehand as well. Uh, that's why there's a bit of blur to the photo. But I think sharpness is also overrated. The blurness actually, I feel, adds character to the, to the jellyfish. It adds some movement. Yeah, There's a phrase, uh, I think sharpness is a concept of the uh, Bogwa, oh, Boji. Yeah. So maybe, as in, you shouldn't necessarily strive for sharpness, but as in, you can also. Uh, but you can see if uh, maybe not having sharpness can actually add character to the film. As uh, Damien and Sandra mentioned, it does add a, like a dreamy look to some of the photos as well. I really love the colors here. The deep rich blue. The deep rich blue is actually very, very difficult to shoot on Polaroid. Uh, um, unless you use like SX-70 film, and even then in a dark area, it's going to be impossible to capture anything without any blur. So personally, I, I really love this, but I think on the first glance, most people won't realize what it is actually. Yeah. Then another photo I really liked is actually the dolphin photo. Um, I like going outdoors. I like hiking. I like seeing uh, things. So uh, the, the, the dolphin also happened to be just at the aquarium, but uh, of course, uh, maybe Brandon, you want to switch over to the, the dolphin photo. So everyone else can have a look as well. Yeah. So how I shot this is actually how you shoot a race car. Dolphins, they don't stay still in the water. Uh, so as it, pet, as it moves across me, I will just pan the photo. Uh, I pan the camera as well. So it happened to nail the dolphin. Uh, I was quite happy with the outcome. I think this was my second shot trying to attempt it. Yeah, and uh, there are two ways you can shoot underwater. One is at a sea aquarium. The other is actually you use an underwater camera and then you transfer it on a Polaroid lab. Yeah, so that, but of course, uh, shooting uh, animals is a lot harder. Uh, you gotta move. 
and usually you'll have to use flash actually but in this case i, I was quite lucky i managed to luck out mm. maybe you can move up of uh, this photo then uh can we scroll down yeah. okay the last one so uh, i i don't really capture memories per se um I, I just like to take things that are uh, aesthetic. Uh, I think uh, Sam's photos, they had a lot of depth to it because they had a lot of memories involved. For me, I, I, I'm more of uh, an old school photographer in the sense that I will go to a location. Uh, I will find a location that is interesting where I think something interesting could happen. So this is actually Labrador Park. Uh, I tried to get, uh, so there are these small pavilions that stick up uh, a bit into the sea and you'll notice that people actually exercising yeah so this guy was actually exercising he was just waving his hands uh left and right but that's the kind of photos i like i like to go to a place i like to basically camp if i think something interesting is going to happen and then i'll just wait so it's a very old school style of street photography uh needs a lot of patience uh and then then i got the shot I love how it kind of turned out. It turned out very symmetrical. And I think this person uh, just being in the shot actually adds, uh, adds a bit more meaning to the shot. Otherwise, it's actually quite an empty shot. Um, personally, I think Brandon and Phoebe would have realized when we go uh, on photo walks, I don't really like to spend time uh, if I see an interesting subject, I will just straight away shoot. So actually, that's why my favorite camera is actually the a variant of the SX70. It's the SX70 Sona. Yeah, so I love shooting on that. Uh, but my Sona is a bit spoiled. Sometimes the, the manual focus doesn't really work. Mm. Maybe, maybe um, anyone who has questions can feel free to ask. If not, actually, I am done with uh, the photos. So basically, they were just a series of photos I did as things opened up. Going hiking, going aquarium, going for dinner dates, that kind of stuff. Things that were as normal to me. Cool. I mean, I was uh, in the chat, I was saying, uh, I probably never see or heard anybody walking around in Singapore with a pack of ice uh, with Dude. their Polaroid. <laughs> uh, but we, we have uh, discussed this before with a few other photographers, how the, um, the temperature has uh, in Singapore does affect the film. Lah. But really, I never hear before anybody uh, walk around with a pack of ice with their Polaroid. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, yeah. I wish Polaroid would just change the chemistry as in uh, Fujifilm can can work in Singapore's climate. So I, I think just give it them some more time. Lah. They should be able to, to improve the chemistry. Oh, uh, before we go, can, can I show the sunrise photo? As, sorry, the sunset photo. So this is another characteristic of Polaroid. I don't think many people realize. But if you use Instax and you shoot it at the sunrise or sunset, right? Uh, on your film, it will in on Fujifilm Instax, it will turn as a black dot. Um, so actually, I love shooting sunrise and sunsets on Polaroid because the sun actually appears as it should. So this is actually a sunset photo at the dairy farm quarry, and I love how the 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 film actually captured the subtle colors in the the sky. Actually, if you notice how the the yellow transitions into orange, transitions into red transitions into purple it's a bit harder to see on the the this scan the copy but on the actual one it, it looks uh, uh actually amazing yeah but i can't really see on on the webcam map as well yeah but that's it that's it for me cool thank you prash uh, and uh, thank you thanks to everybody who are sharing um in the chat also uh, phoebe is also here but uh, in the interest of time, uh, we will probably leave uh, Phoebe because we've already hit our one, one hour mark. Um, I want to give a bit of time to everybody to also ask questions and also sort of network a little bit like how we did at the 
exhibition la. So uh, perhaps uh, Phoebe, you want to say hi, but uh, we will leave Phoebe for the next round with uh, Keith. There was a total of uh, nine photographers. So initially we started off, we, we had seven photographers in mind that we approached, but then uh, we realized there were so many other photographers that we invited more in as well, and we had nine at the exhibition. So today we went through four of them. Yep, is it four? Uh, Samantha, Damien, and Sandra, Jen and then uh, Prash. So we still got quite a few more. So ho hopefully we will do another snap and share with the rest of the photographers and um, you guys can join us. Uh, Phoebe, I want to say hi to everybody. <laughs> hi everybody. See you next session most probably. Yeah. Cool background, Prash. Thanks. Love it. Bikini bottoms. <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, yeah, it's very cool to see like everybody's uh, colorful like focusing on bright colors photos as well and also at the same time uh, it's really interesting to look at Jen's um vintage photos using the vintage films in fact yeah so initially I didn't know that she was actually using the vintage films until like earlier on she was showing us and I was like wow okay it's really the films from like the older the older days the more of the really vintage films. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wait, just to interject, uh, I'm not sure, but because I usually shoot evening light, so maybe that might have an effect as well. Yeah, mm, like nice, nice. Light, so maybe that was the yellowish effect, I guess. The, the main <laughs> thing is, is that... Or is it white? <laughs> the main thing is that all the tones of the your your pictures are actually are actually about like the, towards the sepia tone. And it's really very nice. It looks like really a full collection, a whole collection of it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I was like showing um like some of my my friends who actually came for the exhibition, like your photos, and they were like saying that yeah, it's it's they were wondering how you actually achieved that that same tone of colors like from for all your photos that that were shot at different places oh yeah and different places but with the same color tone as well yeah probably so is it really the, the timing mm, but i okay. purposely chose that time to <laughs> batch. i think could be the best right. you may know what you're saying is the batch of the film right the the, the yeah. this is probably time zero or something like that they were all in this like this sepia style is it <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think I think looking at the photo, we we were definitely quite impressed with uh, with Jen's one as well. Uh, I mean, it's it's, I mean, you have to think about the fact that the 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 film was shot at that particular time, and also, I mean, there's also consideration as how it's preserved as well. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, this this was, I think, definitely we agree. It's one, it, we were also like, you know, it was one of the interesting things that that the, the pictures that we saw as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. <laughs> Yeah. yeah I think I have a lot to learn from you for the Polaroids because <laughs> back then I was just like just playing around just shooting as I wished not because like I know how but I'm just like shooting what I see and what really touches me during the, the trip yeah, oh. yeah it's really Jen nice. I have a question how did you keep the Polaroids um, during all these years to retain the colours um actually I, I actually paste some of them on my wall. So a few of them a few of them are like quite faded. But somehow those that um I put it I, I have this little square album for Polaroids. So I just put it in a photo album. But there are a few where I actually like uh hang it on the wall so it's quite faded. Oh, okay. But then the thing yeah. is when I shot this, because of the film, the film, you know, it's a hit and miss. So it came out like that, actually. It just turned more rich yellow over the years. Mm. Yeah. I think I think there's uh quite a, a bit of like everybody's way of storing the pictures are, are also different. Like um maybe there's there's is there anyone that has like a special way of storing your film? Like for me, it's like I've, I'm just um, putting them into the whole, into like the Polaroid um, box where it used to like, 
where the cartridge actually came from, la, literally like out of the box, then I'll just slot it in. Or I, I will just accumulate them because all my, even including in stacks as well, I will just put them in the boxes just literally away from the sun because um, I understand that it, once it's actually exposed to light, there, there might be a, a chance that it may actually get some bleach as well. Like, does anybody has like any other special ways of storing your, your pictures other than like just keeping it away from the sun? So actually, right, um, what they recommend is you can actually keep it in light or sunlight, but you need to have something that protects it from UV. So actually, let's say if you want to display it, you can get a photo frame that has uh, acrylic that uh, does not emit UV through. Uh, yeah. That's one way you can actually display your Polaroids and keep the colors lasting. Otherwise, you can do a very technical way of storage like I do. Uh, I just chuck it in my nearest drawer. Yeah, so <laughs> that's uh, not for the faint heart. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Some some people do mind about the scratches on the on the photos. Mm. That's why they, they cannot take like just chucking it at the side. Yeah. But personally I'm okay. I think Brandon is a bit anal about it at times. Like if there's too many scratches. Because so um when we do pop ups, we actually have like we usually will bring our own photos to to actually let other people to actually touch and feel of it. And yeah, he he at times he will be like looking out like whether the person's like fingers are like oily, greasy, and all. Then after that, if touch the photos, like hey, uh, donor, <laughs> like come, kind of, yeah, come kind of reaction. Yep. Okay. Other than that, I I think that's all from me. Like if I don't have any other questions, like not sure anybody has any other questions for anyone else. Like, oh, Brendan, do you want to take over? <laughs> we, were, we were discussing earlier, uh, I mean, we, we sort of like, uh, was just wondering what everybody, uh, what, what what inspired them to sort of like, to take Polaroids or to take photos. Lah. But I know that some of them they covered in what they shared. Um, maybe if anybody would like to share, you know, why they why they prefer instant photography to other methods or why they, why they prefer like film analogs to digital photos also. I think I, I just thrown out two questions, but feel free to just uh, share your own version of what you think I've asked. Hmm. Like why, why, why digital, why Polaroid or why film versus Polaroid and, you know, what sort of photos inspire you lot? Mm. Oh, nice, Ryan's question is is the same as you. Uh, okay. Maybe Prash, do you do you have any? What what inspire you to to take uh, photos and you know instead of digital photos? Because I know um you ever mentioned that you you when you post on your Instagram the digital photos that you took right you got more followers or you got more likes. Yeah, so actually, uh, since starting this uh, analog trend since, uh, since the beginning of the year, uh, my followers have been hating it. They have been leaving me, my likes have been dropping, but who gives a shit, you know? <laughs> so I've just been posting it because, as in, I enjoy it. As in, uh, Instagram isn't, okay, it's for, for me at least, it isn't something where I get self-validation from. It's just something where I showcase uh, my photos. So like when, when I used to shoot on Instax uh, like a decade back, uh, there wasn't no real like photo sharing app unless you were into Flickr and all that. And Flickr seemed more like for hardcore photographers, uh, not really for like amateurs like me at that point in time. Uh, I probably still am an amateur, but uh, hopefully not not the same level yeah so for me uh, i like shooting polaroids because or rather instant film in general i just love the magic of seeing the film develop there's a certain charm to it i just cannot explain like i can i can tell you all the words but until you shot like your own polaroid and you see it develop before your very eyes right it's very hard to explain that anticipation and seeing the photo sometimes you make happy accidents sometimes it comes out as the worst shot you ever shot you know uh it's uh i guess it's like 35 mm film but the the gratification is a bit faster you know yeah whereas 35 mm it's it, you get the rolls back two three weeks later you forgot what you shot uh you have no idea what settings they were on you and there's no no way for correction at that point in time as well whereas polaroids that at that moment you really capture a moment and you're in that moment uh, you will know whether you messed up or you did well. Yeah, so 
I like um, the fact that I get something to hold on as well because I have a lot of photos on in my phone. I have thousands and thousands of photos. Uh, but very few of them I actually go back and look at. Whereas anything on a physical medium, I usually will, by happenstance, you know, go into my anti-UV drawer, pick out a photo, and uh, I'll, uh, it'll bring back certain memories, a certain event, certain things. Yeah, and I'm sure it's the same for the rest of you as well. Certain, certain Polaroids, they, 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 or instant film rather, they carry certain meaning as well. The other day, I was just telling my friend, uh, I, I went back into Polaroids. Uh, then he actually fished out like an Instax photo out of his wallet from like 10 years back and showed me. So this is a photo I had taken of him and a group of our friends just before he left for Australia. And he's been keeping it in his wallet all this while. Uh, so so I, 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 was, I was shocked he actually kept it for so long. Yeah, so I, I guess we all have our little stories of why we like uh, instant film. I, I guess this is one of the reasons why I like them. Yeah. Actually, adding on, I was thinking about it like as well. Like, why do I like uh, an instant photography? In fact, like, why do all girls, most girls, like instant photography? It's just that whether they are willing to actually part with their money to buy Polaroid, or they are just willing to actually pay for Instax because since it's more affordable, I think it's it's also sort of like the same same idea as unboxing something that you've actually bought. But you are actually unboxing of an image that you have actually just shot and you won't know how it will exactly will turn out to be until you wait for another like 10 or 15 minutes and there will be a picture that's out instantly like for you to actually check out. And yeah, at times you get surprises like what you what Prash has mentioned. And yeah, I think that's that's actually the factor that makes me uh want to shoot more instant photography as well. And, and trying to perfect it, like, because if different cameras, due to the viewfinder, sometimes there's actually a parallax error. So it's it's more of like challenging myself, trying to actually perfect how I frame my pictures as well. Yeah. So, but still, still trying uh, for, for Polaroid at times, I still need, require some help. Like, Brenda will be like, hey, yeah, you should actually stand like further away. Yeah, just too near or kind of thing. Yeah. That's, that's my take on why I shoot instant photography instead. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I mean, um, I was also thinking like um, with uh, Praj, Damien, Sandra, and even uh, Jen also, you all got a lot of uh, photos to choose from, right? Because it must be a headache to curate the... When we told you, you said there were not more than 10 photos, it must have been like a nightmare to, to decide which 10 photos to choose. Yeah, I just wonder how you all sort of like put, put your mind to selecting the photos as well. Beside the team, like, beside the team. Mm. Because I mean, we said the team was a guiding team, but you can choose any photos you want, right? Mm. For me, I think right up to the, I mean, you all saw right up to the, me, the last minute that I said, I was still like changing the photos. <laughs> so it's, it's really uh, for me, like uh, maybe you mentioned, like I try to keep it within the same tone to, as a form of presentation but actually like all these photos are really precious in each and every one of them because they represent a moment in time during that because I was so near with the expensive film right so every every shot that I took right was I really think and go and um, like that's the essence of what I like about that that part of the journey that's why I shot that picture and and if I actually shot extra it was to mail back to myself or mail to my friends because I used to have pen pals. <laughs> like I like tactile stuff. So I came from that generation. <laughs> and when I was young, like I, I, I love all the old photos my, my dad will like keep of us and everything. Now I keep them like that, but I used to have photo albums. And there's something about touching and handling the paint, you know, photo. And I always tell my friend, if my whole house burned down, I'll run out of the photos first. Not even the cameras, I'll run out of the photos. And it was especially painful for me when I went digital and I lost the, I think I lost at least three years worth of my uh, travel pictures because my hard drive crashed. Now I have like 10 gigs of hard drive and I back up and back up and back up. But I was so glad that back then I managed to like actually print out I had the habit of printing out my favorite photos and these are like so precious because I lost the hard drive. <laughs> so it's 
So I think that really um, uh, conveys like why I want something very tactile. And like I said, uh, part of my journey as a photographer was like when I, even when I went to taught myself and I went digital, when I interact with the old people or the young children, it gives me joy to when I actually I bring along a Polaroid or, or insects or whatever and I print out the actual thing and give it to them. And that is, that kind of satisfaction is not, you cannot describe all, you know, maybe to them, that photo, like to me, it's like maybe five dollars or three dollars, but to to them, it's like the whole world. Yeah, so I I really like that tactile thing. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think yeah. for 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 us, um, yeah, going back to the question, how we chose the photos, um, I I think I think when 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 we heard about the the exhibition opportunity, we wanted to be able to showcase the different films um, and I, I mean you know obviously we, we we see a lot of you know Polaroid original the Polaroid films now but obviously there's a long history to Polaroid and obviously you know we're also happy to see you know Brandon and, and obviously Prash showing you know some of the older cameras mm -hmm. uh, on, on site as well during the exhibition mm -hmm. so it was definitely very good for um, uh, I think I think for, for the visitors to come and see that Polaroid just doesn't exist now there's a long and varied history to it and and yeah and, and that's uh, and that's clearly yeah. Oh, hey, <laughs> new, new joiner. Yeah. Hi, Ryan. Uh, yeah. Um. So, so, so. I, I think, I think. Bye, when... first. Bye, bye. Oh, okay. Can we yeah. all just quick take a quick photo before Sam leaves. So sorry. Oh, okay. Because okay. uh, okay. she needs to go off. Uh, but we can still continue to chat. We've still got the room for uh a while more. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, everyone. Uh, if you yeah, are okay. here, just um, yeah, switch on your okay. camera, and then we'll just do a wave or like just a. So that we can all share this on uh, Instagram later on and uh, whatever medium we've got. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. We'll, we'll continue this for a while more. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Damien. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you didn't realize Sam was leaving. Uh, yeah. So so I I think in terms of curating, uh, you know, we we looked at look at what mediums shots that we've had, as well as you know how we kept to the theme. Um, and I, I think you know it does. It, I think in terms of presentation, we definitely were not you know can't match what Jen did in terms of color coordination and and uh, in terms of the presentation. Uh, I think when we see each photo, we see um, you know we we ourselves know the context, we know the meaning, and we hope to share it. And I think the best part of this year of the exhibition was actually being able to talk to people and to tell them, you know, kind of explain to them, you know, how we got to this shot, why we love this shot. And uh, I think photos and abstract, like how, you know, how we post on Instagram and things like that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good way of sharing. But, but I think best is really when you're in person and, you know, hey, you know, we've got these photos we want to show you or, or you know, when, when we are all together just talking about it. So, so definitely that was how, how we approached um, our, our photo selection. Yeah. Of course, we, we, we don't, well, I don't think this is going to be the last or the only exhibition we'll all be involved. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do something more uh, bigger next time or like um, even collaborate with ideas. That. So, so obviously, this one, this, this time around, this S per normal was because of um, the theme that we had for the right week SG. Uh, but we can definitely uh, think of something in the future and then work to what's it as well. Um, I don't know whether Phoebe wants to share our own uh, ideas that we've got for the next uh, round. But of course, like I say, this is not the, the, the only exhibition that we'll be doing. Hopefully, we can we, we, we can highlight more and can also give you all, all more time to plan. Uh. I, I'm, I'm also really glad that you know, we were able to, to contact you all within three weeks and then get everything um, confirmed on the day itself and everything as well. It's, it was a mad rush for everybody, but um, thank you. Thank you for being part of it. Hmm. Thank you anything? for bringing us all together, man. Like, if not, <laughs> I will not know all these experts. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, I, we're not experts. <laughs> I understand, Jen. You you also you only saw us promoting, right? Then that's why you came. You decided to share your Polaroids that you kept for many many years. Like like this Polaroid that you 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 shown was really never seen before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. Uh, yeah, actually, there are, there are definitely plans, more plans for, for the next year. 
if everything goes back to normal, we are hoping that we will, we are able to do a, a, a something even bigger than this year as well. Like that's what what currently we are planning to do, because um partially like because we are also lacking. I would say usually at the end towards the end of the year, um, OKB dot SG tends to have more pop ups, but this year due to the pandemic, we are only able to actually maybe to create our own small little pop up at the exhibition at the same time getting like some people to actually showcase their pictures as well as to to actually so that we can at least have a bit of like exchange in terms of like like instant conversations i would say like talking about instant photography because um last year we also did like quite a number of like i would say photo walks as well as we also did um a talk a, a left would you say a talk like instant conversation yeah, instant that, conversation yeah Brandon, yeah, and David and Sandra, yeah, I was presenting as well. So we are also hoping to to able to actually carry on that as well. So there are actually quite a number of things that it's on the plate, but we just need to actually try to um, um plan it out and then hopefully keep our fingers crossed. Everything by next year will will kind of like ease out as well. If not, um, we'll we'll still plan try to plan something as we go along. Yeah, since the year is ending, we're gonna have a new year, and then I believe there's more things we are gonna expect from Polaroid as well. Yeah, and as well as KB. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. So okay. yeah. I mean, let's. Uh, I I want to just end off with a very quick um, uh, shootout round to everybody. Uh, just to get what's your favorite camera. I know I heard quite a few and putting you on the spot. Let's just gonna go with like favorite cameras you've got. Um, I think Kit or John, if you're in, also you can just shout it out. If not, uh, we'll just go uh one by one. Uh, on the top of my screen, I got Prash. So Prash, what's your favorite camera? Okay, so I I, I think I did mention that uh, my favorite camera is the SX seventy Sona, but since I already mentioned that, so I'll tell you what's my second favorite camera. <laughs> uh, it's actually just a uh, Pro Cam. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spectra Pro Cam. So I love shooting on it because it doesn't really jam the, the Spectra film, which are notorious for having a lot of issues. Yeah, so that's my second favorite cam. Uh, generally, I do like shooting on Spectra in general. Yeah, so, but I'm a bit uh, trying to not like expand the film so fast. Cool. Um, Damien and Sandra? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. <laughs> Sorry. For I would pref personally for me I would prefer the Mint SLR six seventy X um that with the time machine. Um, it's a it's a classic camera. It has a lot of functions to adjust the shutter speed, and I, and sometimes when um, I'm about to leave the house and I want to bring an instant camera, I find myself gravitating to that camera because I don't have to charge it. I just need to take the camera, take the film, and leave, and um, let the chemical you know cool down or warm up a little bit more before I start shooting it. So that that is one thing that I always tend to gravitate towards. But if I were to, um, keep a an instant camera with me forever it would probably be the Mamiya Universal Press because I can change the lens and the back it's very versatile uh, I have a lot of options to choose from it's a bit bulky but also it's purely analog um, there's no need to edit photos but I'm not a professional photographer so um, our Instagram account was just purely started out of a hobby so that includes shooting interesting cameras and with lots of options with lots of different film bags and lenses, which is which is, which is what we quite enjoy. Well, that's my favorite. But what about your Damien? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I thought it was our favorite camera. No, it was <laughs> uh, I, I I think I I I. <laughs> So, so in terms of, of um, you know, looking, I think looking at Polaroid strictly, uh, I think one of the best cameras I've, I've really used in terms of the utility, in terms of function, in terms of uh, its all-roundedness is the SLR 680SE. And I think it's really one of the best one. It has a flash, it has a sonar, you know, it's, I think the quality of the photo that comes out is really very good as well. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's really one of my, my go-to as well. I'll go to in this case. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I, 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 um, 
I think I think looking at I think if you look at the history, the folding cameras were definitely one of the more popular series in the camera. So so definitely that's uh that's something that I think I think any of us even when we we shoot, you know, it's ten, it tends to stand out. You know, people tend to notice. You know, hey, what's this uh camera that that this person is using? So so it's always a conversation starter in that sense. Yeah. Mm. Cool. I, I I quite like the mean one as well. That's that you you really push the point that it's uh, still analog. It's still got that form factor. It's still you can control the shutter. That one I think that's really cool. Um. Yeah. We'll we'll find out more of your photos and your cameras from your Instagram for sure. <laughs> yeah. Every time y'all go out, I I know y'all always show your photo. Uh, Jen, I know you only got X seventy, right? Maybe my question will change a little bit for you. What is what is a camera that you want to get next? After you hear everybody's camera and everything, mean Polaroid wise. Do you want to get the mean also? Is it the one that that Sandra just? My, my camera just crashed recently, <laughs> so I think I'll get a new one. Uh, this is my third one. <laughs> oh no! I got a suggestion. Uh, retrospect is having twenty percent off for Black Friday. Really? <laughs> Wanna vintage <laughs> camera? That's the way to go. I just like classic stuff and. For me, this is like, I don't know, I just fell in love with the look of it. And then I, I really like the pictures that come out from it because I tried the uh, um, other cameras with plastic lenses, like Lomography and all that. And yeah. I still like the look of what this produces. So I'm looking at either repairing it or get getting a new set. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All the way. <laughs> Yeah, retrospect twenty percent. Uh, OKB also got twenty percent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for me, like camera is actually to me, it's just a tool. And at the end of the day, it's like you know, like crayon or you write with a pen or you write with a pencil. So to me, I really just like experimenting with different kinds. I have to spend time with each camera each time, like at least half a year. <laughs> then I really like get to know the camera. All right. Okay. Awesome. Um, Phoebe, you wanna answer it quickly, or uh, we'll leave this leave this question to you the next time round. You can leave it to the next time, or I can share maybe partial. Like, I do what, have like. What is shoot round? Isha, shoot round. Okay. Um. Currently, if you are talking about tech, tech wise, right? In terms of tech wise, I would say uh, actually, surprisingly, I would love the I would love to actually use the the polo right now much more as compared to other cameras because of the how the focus of it uh, like how it can actually focus like them crispy and sharp as compared to others or in fact the newer cameras i would say yeah yep okay thank you all right guys we we, we are really on time and uh, thank you all for your sharing um, if you like, we can do one more photo or another wave and photo if you like, and I'll I'll send this out to you all uh, Or you want to post with beers or more? Okay, yeah, I didn't think about that. But then, uh, thank you very much for coming on. Um, uh, we've got still the last few people that are with us. I think there is um, Ryan, there is uh, John and Kit, and also the few others who all join us uh, tonight as well. Thank you all again, and um, we'll take a, another group shot. And uh, let's hope for this to be not the last one, the, but the first one, okay? Thanks, guys. All right, I got a photo. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, quick shout out if anybody, uh, do follow our all the photographers that are highlighted. If you have any questions, also feel free to follow and message them and ask them. Okay, guys, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.